Hey guys, this is Camille. If you guys are new to my channel, please make sure to subscribe. If you've already subscribed, then thank you so much. And please turn on your notifications so that you can be the first one to see all my cool videos. Thank you so much. Let's start. Today's vlog is all about my gadgets. I'm going to show you guys all my cameras for vlogging and blogging and Instagram and all my social media channels. And aside from that, I'm also going to share with you my favorite apps that I use to edit my photos and videos. So let's start off with my first ever, well not my first ever, but my, my, no wait, okay. Let's start off with my first main, no not first main eh. Wait lang, let me just talk to myself for a while. Okay, so let's start off with my OG vlogging camera. It's this heavy thing. It's as big as my face, see? Um, this is called the Canon 5D Mark III. And I'm using the 24-70mm lens in f2.8. This is actually my dream camera and lens from way, way back. And I really saved up for this because both of them are really super, super expensive. And I guess that's also the reason why I can't bring myself to sell this baby even if I already have a lighter, more convenient mirrorless camera. It's just, I'm so attached to it. I saved up for it and it's one of the cameras that I really brought with me when I was starting out. And I would bring it to like all my first major travels, major events. So this was really my favorite. Would you believe like this? Super thin girl was like carrying this around, this around around Europe. Turn around. This is how I carry it, so it's not as heavy, and it's the weight is kind of distributed to the left and right side of the body. So in terms of photos, I still think this takes the best photos, even if I already have a really good mirrorless camera. Um, this is also one of the reasons why I can't let this go. The colors of Canon SLRs are just different. They're always so vibrant, and they make your skin look so fresh. And I like how. It also does the bokeh effect because it has a 70mm side. So that's how I used to, whenever I want like a really blurred blurred background, then I put it on the 70mm, zoom it all the way in. And then if I want to have more view, then it's a 24mm. So this is my favorite vlogging camera. I also used to use this for Instagram photos because I used to use an iFi uh, memory card. So this camera doesn't have Wi-Fi. So with the iFi memory card, I'm able to transfer my photos from here to my phone wirelessly. So that's how I solved that problem. Also, I've got an extra battery so I don't have to stress when it's already low bat. I don't use this for vlogging because it's not an autofocus camera so I don't want to have to keep like switching it. I'm not a professional. I know professionals use this for videos as well but I'm not and I'm tita and I'm really lazy so I don't use it for videos. Just very, very, like super duper rarely. Next up is my Sony a7S camera. So this is my main camera now. It's what I use whenever I travel. It's basically almost all of my Instagram photos are shot using this baby. So it's the Sony a7S. Did I say Canon or Sony? Replay that. Sony a7S camera. So it's a Sony a7S camera and with a 25mm I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly. Zeiss, ba Zeiss? Zeiss? Zeiss Batis lens with f2.8 aperture. I always like to go for lenses that are f2.8 at least. So f1.4 to f2.8 so that I get that nice bokeh effect in the back. Anything other than that, I don't really use. It's just my personal preference. Which is why I found this super duper perfect because it's wide angle but it's still perfect if I take closer shots, so it's the perfect lens for OOTDs. I've actually recommended this to all my friends like Noreen and Patricia. We're all using Sony cameras and we're all using this lens as well because I've been bragging about it and everyone believes my expertise. <laughs> Just kidding, but yeah. So this is the lens that I use. That's why also if you look at my photos, Sometimes it looks like I'm way stretched out. It's not because I photoshopped it, it's just because of the wide angle lens. If you take it from a certain angle and you stand a bit closer to it, then it really automatically makes you look longer. So that's the effect of a wide angle lens. It's also with this camera that I started shooting raw. At first, I really wanted to just shoot with JPEG because in my head, I take so much photos, so if you take raw, it usually takes up bigger file sizes. So I was worried that if I shoot raw, then I wouldn't be able to take more photos. I'd have to keep changing memory cards, but actually no. 
for some reason this is pretty good I have like a 64 gig memory card and it always lasts me like maybe two three trips abroad and it's just still okay so another plus with shooting raw is that I don't really have to worry about the colors anymore and the lighting well of course it's better if you have good lighting already to begin with but if you don't and you don't really have a choice then with raw photos there's more of a chance that you can save the photo and its colors because you can really manipulate more things about the photos and that's why you could already see a lot of you actually started commenting on my Instagram that you like my photos more now. It's because of that. I switched to RAW and that's why it's becoming more HD and the colors are always so colorful. I think that's one of the main, main reasons why my photos really improved a lot is because I switched to RAW. So there, if you guys are thinking of investing in a good, like, lightweight mirrorless camera, then I think Sony has some of the best ones out there in the market. They've got a really wide range of mirrorless cameras for a lot of different budgets. This is more on the high end. I know they have newer versions of this one, but if you want to start with simpler ones, then you can go for, like, the A5, I think it's A5000 and A6000. I think they have newer names but those are the names that I still remember so you can start with that those also have interchangeable lenses like this one so there ta-da oh and if you're also wondering this is actually full frame which is great because it makes the most out of this lens it really captures a lot in one frame so this is really good for that so yeah and for all of you wondering once again this is my main Instagram camera a lot of you always always ask me this in the comment section it's Sony A7S with the Zeiss Vatis 25mm f2.8 lens. This is the camera that I don't that I I, I I use the least. It's my GoPro. It's actually new. It's the GoPro Hero 5. Is that how you call it? See, I don't use it so much. I don't even remember what how you call it. But GoPro Hero 5, I think, yes. So I bought this mainly because just in case I feel sporty and for all my travels, if for example, if I'm gonna go like swimming or if I'm gonna go diving, even if I haven't tried diving, I wanted a camera for that. And I wanted a camera that was waterproof and would be able to survive the rugged life because, you know, I'm rugged like that. That's why I invested in a GoPro. So GoPro is also really good for videos. So I've also used this already in videos. If you've noticed my my uh, vlog with my Joa, my boyfriend, where we shopped in Divisoria. We actually used two vlogging cameras and one of them was this one, GoPro. What I really love about GoPro is that it's very wide angle as well. It's very sturdy, it's tiny, it's so small, and it's able to take really good time-lapse videos, which I really love because they're so pretty, but it, you know, it's just, it takes a lot of time to create a nice sunset time-lapse, but it's so worth it. That's one of the things that I love to do with my GoPro, taking time-lapse videos. And then, my last, but not the least, no, it's, it's not the last already, but this is my latest baby. It's my new baby. Hold on. I, I hope I can get it out. Ugh. I've always been dreaming to have a drone. This is the DJI Mavic Pro. Every time I see drone photos on Instagram, I'm like, oh, I need a drone in my life. I need it. And finally, when I was somewhere, I was with my boyfriend, and we saw the Mavic Pro on sale. It wasn't really a big, a huge sale, but it was a good enough sale for me to actually consider buying. It was a good enough price that it was actually a bit cheaper than the prices that I see in the US online stores. So I was really, really deliberating hard if I were gonna buy it. I guess the final push I got was from my boyfriend. He really wanted me to invest in a DJI Mavic Pro. Originally, I was actually thinking of buying a new mirrorless camera and upgrading to maybe a Leica. Leica or Leica. But he said that, you know, your Sony is still good. Why don't you just invest in something else that can give you something different, like an edge to all the other gadgets that you have now. So there, I bought the DJI Mavic Pro. Actually, deep inside, I think my boyfriend just really wanted a toy. Like, he's so sick of taking my OTDs and taking my static shots that he just really wanted a toy. And this is the closest thing he can get to a toy while shooting. I actually don't know how to fly this. I, I have no idea how to operate the DJI Mavic Pro. It's pretty new. I've only had it for a few months. And I've already entrusted this to my boyfriend for safekeeping and also for practice. I asked him to learn how to use it because he is our drone master. And I have no plans of learning because I am Tita like that and I don't want any more new knowledge. So, if for those of you who are thinking of getting a, a drone, why did I choose this one? I chose this one because it's small enough, the portability. 
it comes in this bag and everything you need is already here. See? It's as big as my SLR. So I chose this one instead of the DJI Spark even if DJI Spark is cheaper because this has a better battery life and DJI Spark doesn't really fold so technically it's still bigger than this one because it doesn't fold. It's lighter, yes, but it doesn't fold so it's bigger, it's not as compact as this one which is why I went for this. It's more compact, it's convenient, it's travel friendly, it's portable, it's good. And last but not the least, wait, did I already say and last but not the least? But anyways, this is really the last but not the least. My main vlogging camera which is the Canon G7X Mark II. I'm gonna show you guys because it's what I'm using to record right now. So there. That is the Canon G7X Mark II. It's really tiny. Okay, so the Canon G7X Mark II, when I was new to the vlogging, well, I'm still pretty new to the vlogging world, I really researched what's the most convenient and easiest camera to use for amateur vloggers like me. And a lot of the vloggers are actually using Canon G7X Mark II. From international to local ones, everyone's using it. And I like it because it can instantly make you look fresh, even if you're already super duper sweaty. Like now, I'm super sweating already, but I still look fresh, right? Please say yes. <laughs> I like it because um, it's also autofocus, so you don't have to keep toggling it and it adjusts the lights and the focus and everything else. So it's really, really super duper easy to use. It's not one of those hard to understand cameras. So if you're scared of technology and gadgets, then this is the camera for you because it's really super easy to understand. I've actually used this for photos as well, way, way back. All the photos from my United Kingdom trip was actually taken with the Canon G7X Mark II because I was really feeling lazy then and I wanted to bring a small camera. And I was with my mother and I was scared that she wouldn't be able to understand my mirrorless camera. So I just brought that one. It was actually still pretty good. So if you're not really looking into like professional editing and like printing super duper big photos and it's just for digital, then Canon G7X is actually pretty good. So yeah, that's the only vlogging camera that I use. I don't have any other cameras that I use for vlogging. Although the Sony a7S is actually known for really good videos, I think it's more for pros and I just find this one easier to use so I don't really use this for videos. Except if I have no other choice and that one's dead or I forgot to bring it, then I use this. But that's super duper seldom because I'm a Girl Scout like that and I never forget things. So there you go, those are all my gadgets for Instagram, blog, and vlog. I hope that that has answered some of your mysterious questions as to how I come up with my beautiful photos and videos. <laughs> Just kidding. But yeah, those are my gadgets. Um, when it comes to the settings that I use on my gadgets, I always set my camera on manual mode. Uh, exposure always on zero, I don't really toggle that so much. I like manual because I'm able to control everything from ISO to shutter speed to aperture. As a rule of thumb, I always keep my aperture at 2.8 or below if I have like a 1.4 or 1.8 then I stick to that as well. I don't go higher than 2.8 because I like the bokeh and the light and how it looks on my lens. And when it comes to shutter speed, I don't really go lower than 1 over 80 because if I go lower than 1 over 80, then I find it harder to focus and it might be shaky. Like it doesn't look shaky here, but when it comes to editing, then you'd see that it's actually not focused. When it comes to my ISO as well, I always keep my ISO at 200 to 400. I don't go higher. If it's really, really dark and I have to go higher than that, then I try my best not to go higher than 1000. 200. I try my best not to go higher than that to avoid or to lessen the noise. But then again, since I'm already shooting my photos raw, it's actually not as bothersome now. There are ways to remove the noise, but you know, if you can avoid it already when you're shooting, then you're not, right? And then, so that's my settings for photos. When it comes to my vlog, my setting is always just an auto. <laughs> because again, I am super lazy and that's really why I got Canon G7X Mark II. Because it's got a really, really intelligent auto mode. So that's why I use that. Even with my GoPro as well and my uh, DJI Mavic, I also set it at auto mode when I'm using it to take videos. So we've got all the settings done. Now let's go and talk about the apps or the editing softwares that I use to edit my photos. So on my laptop, I use Adobe. 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 Gutom? <laughs> Hungry? So I use Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop. So I edit my photos on Lightroom first 
and then I do the cropping and the perspective and all the little like marks that I want to remove on Photoshop. The reason that I don't do this on Lightroom, even if there's a way for you to do that, is because I just learned to use Photoshop earlier than Lightroom, so I'm more familiar with Photoshop and I'm more, I'm more comfortable with Photoshop. That's why with those little things, I still do it on Photoshop instead of Lightroom. Lightroom is basically, for me, it's just to fix the colors and the sharpness, everything else, like the contrast, the brightness, the levels, the colors, everything on Lightroom, and then just little details for just making it perfect on Photoshop. I don't really change the colors anymore in Photoshop, just, you know, if there's a mark there, I have to remove a person there, or if I have to crop the photo here and there, so that's, that's when I use Photoshop. And then I transfer the photos on my phone, and still, I edit it on Lightroom. I also have the Lightroom app here. I edit it a bit more, just so it's, 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 you know, it's just according to the screen of my iPhone. I don't know why, I just feel like it has a different effect on the iPhone, so I still like to toggle a bit more here. And then, I edit it also on Snapseed to make it even sharper. So I know that you guys are requesting for a how do I edit my Instagram video. I will do that, but for now, I'm just explaining to you the apps that I use and the softwares just so if you want to learn for yourself and you, you really can't wait for the how do I edit my Instagram photos vlog. So here it is. At least you know the software that I use. And no, I don't have any filters. I don't use any filters. I used to use Visco, VSCO Cam, the editing app here on iPhone, but I stopped using that because there's really no point to it. You can do all that on Lightroom. As long as you understand the colors and everything else, you can do that on Lightroom easily. And also, I feel like Visco kind of um, makes the quality of your photos lower than what they really are. So I don't like it because I want to maintain the quality as much as possible. With Snapseed and Lightroom, I feel like it doesn't really lower the quality so much. I mean, if it does, it's not significant. So that's why I like using it. About. Okay, so when it comes to videos, I don't really edit my videos myself. I used to edit my videos myself, that's why you didn't really see a lot of vlogs here. It is a struggle for me, it takes me forever. Oh my god, vloggers, ang galing nyo. But I have an editor, a really cool editor that does it for me. For our videos, for the vlog, she uses Adobe Premiere and um, CC After Effects or something. Please correct me, editor, in this video if I'm wrong. So those are the softwares that she used for editing our video. If I were to edit my videos, like sometimes I make short ones and I use the Final Cut Pro. So there you go, you guys know all my gadgets and apps and softwares, everything about my photo and video taking. So I hope that you guys like this video. If you guys have any more questions about my gadgets or about cameras that you're looking into, feel free to send in your questions through the comment section below and I'll try my best to answer all of them. If you don't have any more questions, then please still do leave comments below, positive ones. Let me know if you guys want to see anything else on my channel. And that's it. Please like, subscribe, and yeah, comment. I said that nay. But yeah, thanks guys. See you next week. Babush.